Would you like to know the security skills that every cloud architect, cloud solutions architect, and enterprise architect needs to know? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name's Mike Gibbs, and I've been an enterprise architect, a security architect, a network architect, and every other kind of architect you can think of for the last 25 years. And in this video, we're gonna talk about security skills you need to know for that cloud architect role, enterprise architect role, cloud solutions architect role. Now, before I go through the list, I'm gonna let you know, it's gonna sound extensive, especially if you're new to technology, but don't worry about it. You can definitely learn it. Also remember as architects, we don't touch the technology, but you do need to know uh, how the technology works and how the systems fit together and how to use these various systems to secure in the environment. And we're gonna talk about those things that you need to know in order to be able to do this. And uh, you know, also know that in any cloud architect role or cloud solutions architect role or enterprise architect role, you can consult to a security architect and they're gonna be experts on these matters. So keep that in your mind. But as cloud architects or an enterprise architect, we need to know a lot about security because uh, if our systems are hacked, for example, they may not be available. Uh, the internal data could be breached or the internal data could be compromised and not be what it's supposed to be, for example. And uh, we have some privacy issues as well. So it does matter. So these are the eight skills you need to know. And I'm gonna start with uh, probably the most uh, widely known form of security and that's network security. And this is about using the network uh, to secure the environment. So there's an old saying in networking that says, if you can't touch it, if you can't reach it, you can't hack it. And that is so true. So things that you need to understand under networking are things like segmentation. For example, how would you segment a network in the data center? You might use VLANs in the cloud. You might segment into numerous VPCs, for example. There's gonna be something related to filtering, something like an access control list, which determines who can speak to whom, or a firewall that determines who can speak to whom and what's allowed and what's not allowed, for example. Uh, with network security, we have things like uh, traffic shaping and traffic policing. For example, how much traffic do you even allow on the network and what do you do with the traffic when it exceeds a certain policy? And we're typically talking about intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems as part of our healing environment or they're also part of some next generation firewalls as well. Now the next big component in security is gonna be IAM. And IAM is all about uh, what we used to call AAA, authentication, which is determining who you are, who you claim to be, authorization, which is what you're allowed to do, and then accounting, which is what you've done. And we're getting into an environment where our systems are very distributed. They're now gonna be in two and three cal cal clouds and co-location centers and various data centers, and uh, boundaries are getting challenging. And because of that, we need a stronger form of uh, identity and access management, and it is now key in all organizations. They're moving towards zero trust, for example, because of some weaknesses that exist in newer architectures that we have compared to old architectures. So the architect needs to know a lot about identity and access management. The old knowledge of role-based access control is nowhere close to enough. We're now in a world where uh, con uh, context-aware IAM matters, and, uh, and uh, even the AI-based context-aware that can calculate risk and determine what to do in real time. Also things to know in the IAM world are things like identity uh, federations, uh, cloud access security brokers, and how these systems work and how they can be used to secure the environment. Now the next thing that's gonna be critical knowledge for any cloud architect or cloud solutions architect is gonna be data security. And that's things like data classification, data protection strategies, whether that be things like tokenization or obfuscation or encryption. Under data security, there's things like backup and backup security, and of course, data loss prevention and tools. So these are gonna be critical skills for any kind of cloud architect or solutions architect to know. Now, encryption. Encryption is gonna be key to any cloud architecture, any enterprise architecture. So you'll need to know the types of encryption, when and where could you use these types of encryption? Uh, for example, uh, the trade-offs in various encryption protocols, because it's all about trade-offs, and the type of encryption you should select for various things. Because encryption's everywhere, whether it's in public key infrastructure or IPsec VPNs, for example, or SSL TLS-based web applications, encrypted storage, there's gonna be encryption everywhere.
Now, another thing the cloud architects, enterprise architects, cloud solutions architects need to know is application security. So look, we cloud architects aren't gonna be coding and you don't even need to know how to code, realistically speaking, but you do need to know how to secure an application. And that's things like how would you protect an API? What are secure coding practices, meaning practices to avoid common attacks like an SQL injection attack, for example. And these are things like input validation that should be part of an application and the ability to validate and sanitize data that the, someone could put into their browser and inject into an application or block certain types of content. Now, there's also uh, things that uh, people need to think for, the, the, the security people need to think for, for how they do it, uh, like input validation, things like code checks along the way to protect the code and the applications from being deployed. And whether that be static code analysis or dynamic code analysis, are always gonna be these trade-offs that we need to think about. So how and where we're gonna integrate uh, security into the applications. Does it need to be in secure computing? Does it need to be in traditional computing? What are the risks? What are the trade-offs? That kind of thing. So there's gonna be a lot about that that you need to think about uh, secure applications and secure application practices. Now, in any architecture role, you need to be uh, very strong and capable in risk mitigation and risk assessment practices. So being able to identify an organization's strategic assets, helping to determine the value of those assets and the risk to those assets is going to be absolutely critical. Because this way, if you know how to manage the risk, you can guide management. Uh, do they mitigate the risk with, say, some new firewalls, for example, or something else? Do they transfer the risk to an insurance company? As an architect, you know, help recommend a strategy or a strategic blueprint. So you've got to be able to understand how to manage risk. Now, when it comes to our uh, regulations, and regulations are everywhere, if we're going to be a cloud architect, solutions architect, and our enterprise architect, we need to make sure our clients can meet any industrial or regulatory frameworks. So we typically need to know some uh, regulatory frameworks and security frameworks like ISO 27001, uh, HIPAA, GDPR, PCI DSS, that type of thing. So those regulatory type frameworks we need to understand. Now, of course, we need to understand uh, what's going on with the systems. So that means we need to know something about monitoring and logging systems and how we could use it. For example, how do logs fit into the overall uh, security architecture? Uh, how are the logs going to be stored? Are the logs going to be aggregated somewhere? Uh, for example, are the logs going to be analyzed in real time? Like with a seam source system, they can see something in the logs that's an anomaly and potentially mitigate that threat in real time if it senses an attack. And of course, here we also have things like auditing and compliance. So it sounds like a pretty big list of things to know for the security architect. And they fall into the categories predominantly of network security, identity and access management, data security, application security, uh, risk assessment and risk mitigation, regulatory and industrial frameworks, as well as uh, auditing, logging, and being able to analyze what's been done. And they're the key uh, fundamental security areas for the cloud architect. Now, uh, if you'd like to become a cloud architect or you'd like to become an enterprise architect, we can definitely help you do that. Uh, we have a free webinar that we run once a week where we go over the architect career. We talk about what we do. We talk about the skills that you actually need to have to get hired and uh, have a great architecture career. These uh, free webinars are on Zoom. Yeah, which means you can ask questions and we can have an interactive dialogue. They're all free and you can register for these free architecture career webinars and you'll find the registration link in the description of this video. Also, while you're in the description of this video, we have things for you about how to pass the interview, uh, the skills you need for various architecture careers and so much more. So please check them out. That's in the description of this video and they are all free. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect career, enterprise architect career, cloud solutions architect career, security architect career, or AI architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now. I hope to see you in another video very soon.